Welcome back to the FRC Top 25 for week number six, a fresh batch of 25 teams. Some you've seen before, some you haven't. We got some uh, old teams that haven't been on before, which we're excited about, and some great new teams that we'll be featuring uh, as well, too. Of course, healthy debate on teams that didn't make it. We'll show off the uh, top 50 as well, too. Talk clips of the week. All this coming up here on the FRC Top 25. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First updates now, supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Welcome back to the FRC Top 25 for week number six. For first updates now, I'm Tyler Rolds. I'm Christina Tia. I'm Justin Montoys. And I'm Mike Stark. It is good to be back. I had the week off last week. It was the wife's 30th birthday. We went to Cocoa Beach. I was definitely thinking of um, nice. all the teams out there that way. So good to be back. Um, so week uh, six is crazy to believe that this is um, already we're already at this point of the season. District championships already happening. Uh, I was able to catch a couple on. I wasn't able to catch a lot over the weekend, but was able to watch some on demand. But um, initial thoughts, uh, Christine, Justin, um, Tyler, on uh, week six events or or, what, or where we're at, the state of the game. Uh, I didn't get a chance to watch too many events either, um, but just the the clips that I watched from um, the teams that I covered. And I talked about it, uh, the, or I talked about it in the, when I talked about one of the teams, but the finals two um, of the Mid-Atlantic champs was an incredible match. Like, it was tight the whole way through, um, good scoring from both alliances. You know, there was a good volley of, you know, a bunch of red cargo, a bunch of blue cargo. So um, if that's any preview of what um, the events are going to look like this weekend, uh, we're going to be in for a treat. <clears throat> Yeah, I would uh, echo that sentiment. And I know I I was uh, bouncing in and out of watching Texas state state champs, um, and it was it was insane. Uh, a just watching like a webcast of two fields just being like match, 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 yeah, match. It was yeah. like, this is kind of awesome, but kind of a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, watching those teams was absolutely mind blowing. Um, and then I had the chance to pop into the New England events this past weekend and see that. So it was definitely a, a different vibe and cadence overall, I would say, in New England because we still have our district champs coming up. Um, but it was it was really cool to uh, tune into Texas this past weekend. I unfortunately did not pay closer attention to the other events because I was a little too sucked into <laughs> Texas. It was a big event, I'll tell you that. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was at uh, the first in Texas championships. Just got back from Houston a couple days ago. I'm um, going back again. Right. So, uh, but yeah, first, in, it was, it was an awesome event. It really was uh, 80 teams, two fields, as Christine mentioned, uh, matches just kept going back and forth. So like literally the, the way it would go is that you would, uh, a match would get done. They intro the teams for the next match and then do scores from the previous match and start the next match. So like literally mm -hmm. it's just nonstop. Wow the yeah. entire time on that which was really cool i uh, got to talk to a bunch of awesome people uh see some old friends once again which was great meet some new friends and fans as always which is awesome uh it, it, like I, I don't know it's it's so much fun just to take pictures and, and just talk robots and that sort of thing i really do enjoy it and uh it's great to see so many um the finals were nuts uh if you i i did a recap on that we did a uh we did a whole bunch of stuff already for texas but the division finals were absolutely insane the grand finals were absolutely nuts with things happening so uh mm -hmm. it was it was a great competition um it, it went long, obviously, because with grand finals and they didn't do a lot of awards until afterwards, uh, which is fine. Um, but, yeah, overall, great event. Houston weather was awesome, too. So, uh, chat, let us know what events were you uh, paying attention to this week. Uh, we'd love to hear more about your experiences and uh, where you're at, how your teams did, that sort of thing um, as well. We hope that many of you will be at uh, the Houston championships coming up soon. 
Uh, so uh, before we get into the FRC Top 25, let's talk about a couple stats for things. Uh, you might have saw the, uh, the the fake teaser one we put up on screen. That was fake. Uh, no. Let's do that. There we go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So uh, real quick, if you're not familiar with the FRC Top 25, this is a community-based uh, uh, Democratic poll. Uh, so you submit between 10 and 25 teams that you feel that played in the current week. Uh, or for next week, it will actually be all teams that are going to championships will be eligible uh, for the FRC Top 25. Make sure they are going to champs, uh, or at least at the time that they are. Uh, for that, but uh, this will take all teams that played in week six that were voted upon. Uh, there's about 400 teams that were voted for uh, on there. Um, you're going to see on the top uh, where they were ranked by the community uh, uh, Democratic poll. Um, and then below we have ELO, which is a, uh, a rating system that is used. And so this is where they ranked in week six for ELO in uh, particular. Uh, well, actually for ELO is continuous or, or consecutive or it, continuous. There we go. Um, so that's where their rating was at the end of week six. And then the rest of the stats. Auto, Tele, and Endgame are all about just week six. So you're going to see some weird things. There's a team, for example, that's been known for climbing that is like 500th in climbing this week because they didn't have very high climber points. Uh, and that's the reason why. It's Once again, it's the Auto, Tele, and Endgame are just based off the current week uh, for scores. So uh, we'll get those up uh, in just a moment on there and uh, can't wait to uh, talk about more teams. Anything else be to bring up before we uh, head in the top 25, everybody? I don't think so. <laughs> Let's hop in then. All right. I'll take it away. In the 25th spot, we have Team 2122 from Boise, Idaho. It's Team Taters, 50 and 5 overall, and we're the winners of the Arizona North, Idaho, and Utah Regionals. So three times a winner for Team Taters this season with the most recent performance this past weekend in Utah. They ranked third after qualification matches and were selected to the number one alliance. The alliance fought through some uh, adversity, seeing losses actually in the semifinals and the finals. However, the alliance was able to prevail in finals three, 125 to 115. So it was kind of a um, coming off guard a little bit to see a record like 50 wins and only five losses to barely squeak in the top 25. Right. It seems like such a departure mm -hmm. from years past. I mean, if 50 and five, like that's Cheesy Poof's number one for the week overall. Right. Uh, just such a crazy good record. Um, but good teams like the Taters are finding ways to win and win often. And obviously a three, three banner year, um, you know, is, um, much to be proud of. So congrats to team Taters, 21, 22. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Taters. I, I, I love their bot. Uh, the fir first regional, when we first talked about them, uh, they won the event, but you know probably weren't performing at the most optimal level, but they keep getting better. They kind of remind me of, of 33 in that aspect where their curve just kind of keeps getting a little bit better and better, uh, even though they keep winning uh, on their, their their performances, getting better with it as well, too. So I'm delighted to see that. Uh, and Justin, to your comment, I will say there are definitely some teams that did not make the top 25 that could arguably be in it. Uh, there's just a lot of teams this week, uh, for sure. Yeah. So when we go into the top, uh, when when we show up the top 50 uh, there's a couple in the top 50 here that might make you scratch your head a little bit but uh in general there's probably about 10 or 15 teams in the top 50 that could easily be in the top 25 uh this week but nothing against the teams that are in the top 25 because i i think they're all quite deserving this week as well too absolutely right mm -hmm. all right moving on to the 24th team a new one for me is 5895 from heistown Oh, Heightstown, New Jersey. I knew I was going to mess that up. In Petty High School, it's Petty Robotics, 51-5 and five overall. And with the winners, the H&H &H and Seneca District events, as well as the Mid-Atlantic District Championship. So this is a new one for me this year. Uh, super pumped to learn about a new team. Petty Robotics was the number mm -hmm. one seed at each of their events this season, including the District Championship this weekend. Uh, they finished with 45 ranking points in 12 matches and picked up a top 25 mainstay in 2590 Nemesis and added 1923 Midnight Inventors. Don't know how they were still there. To complete right. uh, this championship winning alliance. Uh, so one thing that was really unique watching their matches, uh, there was no swerve drive on the entire alliance. Wow. Which wow. is not common yeah. at all. Um, 5895, number one seed at all their events, and they don't have a turret, so mm. just really impressive driving. Um, 1595 ran an awesome five ball auto path, showed up their uh, really insane driving skills all night long. So, if you want, uh, like I mentioned at the top of the show, if you want to see a great all round match, watch finals two from um, the Mid Atlantic District Championship, it was really good. And congrats to Petty Robotics, 5895. Yeah, yeah. Two things. One, I had the I had this team about uh, uh, eight nine spots higher uh, for what it is. Uh, fantastic performs this week, but yeah, how the heck did nineteen twenty three fall to the no, last no pick idea. in the draft? Like, wow, there's value for you right there, huh? Yeah, no kidding. I mean, was that yeah, just how deep uh, the uh, FMA champs were? I mean, yeah, that's yeah, crazy. You see, yeah, you can see on the screen though just some of the um, 
some of the things that went on. It was also interesting that uh, 1923's uh, sister team was on the opposing alliance as well. Yeah. Um, so both of uh, uh, Midnight and Venture. So they fell to uh, the second to last pick. How? <laughs> Literally how? Yeah, wow. 1923 was seventh and sixth at their two events, and they put their yeah. semifinals at their first and winners of their second. Yeah, that's what so. I'm saying. Yeah, that's, I, that's yeah. Crazy. I don't know how they yeah how yeah, they, they went that that low. All right, uh, so we're moving along uh, to the 20th. Third ranked team, which is team 364 from Gulfport, Mississippi, Gulfport High School. It's Team Fusion, 44 wins and eight losses overall, and with the winners of the Rocket City Regional. So after two finalist outings earlier this year, been there, and not picking up a wild card <laughs> yet, <laughs> Team Fusion put it all on the line one more time at the Rocket City Regional. They were the number one seed after 10 qualification matches, and for the playoffs, they picked the number two seed, team number 59, and 39-59 for the playoffs. The Alliance put up in a really impressive 132 on penalized uh, score in quarterfinal one match one with 364 handling the five ball auto path. Uh, but really impressed me, like I know I mentioned it every single week for one team, is to the, their ability to shoot, uh, you know, a decent ways away from the hub. Um, really makes them uh, cycle quickly. Um, and it was just impressive to see. So 364 is a monkey bar style climb, kind of like 16, um, 78 and gets them up in about seven seconds, which is also just a crazy impressive uh, climb time. So uh, I'm glad this team qualified for Houston because I know that they desperately wanted to qualify yep. at their last uh, their last event. So uh, they're definitely going to be a, a force on their division in Houston. And congratulations and good luck to 364 Team mm-hmm. Fusion. Yeah, this is. Yeah, the- I, think, you know, I was looking. Sorry, Tyler. I was looking back at their <laughs> kind of their. I think they maybe broke out in the 2019 season for us, maybe a little bit before then. But we haven't talked about Fusion a lot over the last couple of years. I mean, COVID and everything too. But um, definitely has been on the top 25 and, and a team um, you know that's that's been here a bunch. So uh, good to see them back up here. Yeah, I was just going to mention that th- this is a team. I, I agree that like. Uh, I think we've been waiting to kind of see them get to that that higher performance and take the event win and delighted to see them do that and so happy they're going to be at uh, championships because they are one of the uh, higher end teams out there and and sometimes from an area you don't hear as much about right so really cool to see them getting some great recognition for a great performance. Yeah, sorry, 2019 was their breakout year, won two regionals, um, had a little mm-hmm. bit of a regional slump uh, a few years before that, so. Uh, definitely good things from uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, and Team Fusion. Mm-hmm. All right, moving along in the 22nd spot, I have Team 359 from Waialua, Hawaii, Waialua High School. It's the Hawaiian kids, the Hall of Fame Hawaiian kids. 60 mm-hmm. wins, 14 losses overall, and with the winners, the Ventura and Utah Regionals. So the Hawaiian kids have competed four times this season <laughs> and have three blue banners and five medals to show for it. Three blue ones, two red ones. This past weekend in Utah, they were the number one seed and picked up fellow top 25-er, 21 22 taters and added 68 44 to their alliance uh, i mentioned a little bit about their journey when i talked about 21 22 so i'm just going to talk about 359's performance in finals three one thing that stands out for their robot uh, which is a little bit unusual is their high arc shot they have a very very high arc um, but it's very consistent as well great driving through defense 359 uh, handled most of the or saw most of the defense there in finals three um, but great driving, allowed them to continue to add cargo throughout the match. Uh, they head back to their climb with about 20 seconds left, easily reach the traverse before time expires. So the machine looks consistent and confident as usual. Another great robot from 359 as their marathon regional season comes to an end. <laughs> and good luck in Houston. And that's four regionals, by the way. It's not like a district team or anything. Yeah, like right. That, so. Yeah. <laughs> and they went to like that's last insane. week. They were in Hawaii two yeah. weeks ago. Or la- yeah, la- yeah, so week five they're Hawaii. Yeah, I think it was. Back. Yeah, continental. I think it was two in a row, I believe, yeah. just to start the season, weeks one and two, and then went back, and then, yeah, they're back. So, on thirty fifteen, we went to three regionals, and the furthest one was four hours away. Like, <laughs> and, that, and that felt like a lot. They're, like, flying, oh, man, that's wild. I, yeah. I can't imagine, yeah. like, bringing a group of kids that far, like, that often and stuff. Like, must When you're having that good of a season, though, I would imagine the momentum is is there. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. I would imagine this is probably one of the best seasons – performance wise that this team has had in quite some time. So I'm excited to see them in Houston and I'm really happy to see that they were able to travel and, you know, compete this much this season. Cause I know a huge part of what it seems like for Glenn's team and the experience of being on the team is, you know, that, that travel experience of like, you know, leaving the, leaving your, you know, home Island and then being able to compete, but for regionals. Yeah. 
Wow, it's also awesome. crazy just to see the disparity across FRC, right? Where 359 is traveling all, all, you know, all over the country, competing four times on these regionals, and then Canada, Canada is like the completely different situation, right? They're small one-day events. It's just the disparity across FRC is really um, intense this year, and it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see how that affects uh, those different teams um, when we all end up in Houston. Yeah, good thought. All right, so the last team I have in this chunk is Team 195 in the 21st spot from Southington, Connecticut, Southington High School. It's the Cyber Knights, 28-9 and nine overall, and were the winners of the Hartford District event. So after a tough first event that saw them as the third robot on the number two alliance and ultimately ending up as finalists, 195 turned it around in Hartford. They were the number three seed after calls and captain the number two alliance this time around with 88 and 3182 joining them. In the playoffs, the alliance put up high scores, easily winning quarterfinals of their quarterfinal and semifinal matches. In finals one, they took match one with the number one alliance battling back to win match two. And in match three, 195 had their turret spinning and scoring even as an alliance member stopped moving uh, uh Fielding all the defense, 195 continued to pepper the high hub, zoomed back uh, to the hangar to finish the double traverse with 88, and ultimately gave the number two alliance the win. So congrats to 195, and good luck to them on the upcoming district championship. So quite a turnaround from 195, yeah. going from the third robot in the number two alliance to the captain of the number two alliance. Yeah, I'll chime in real quick. Um, I was able to stop down in Hartford this weekend, uh, and, I mean, there were a lot of really good, really – high performing teams out of new England at that event. And I know that 195 at their first event did not look like 195 at all. Uh, and to see them kind of bounce back and really hit the field this past weekend, I was really happy to see that their students were nonstop busting their asses this past weekend. And the crazy thing that I noticed while I was there briefly was, you know, their lead programming mentor, Rob Hilton was ping ponging around to other pets, helping teams. Like at one point I was like, yo, where's Rob? I got to say bye real quick, but he was helping like three other teams. So it was really cool to see, you know, they were hungry for this win and to see them take it and, you know, go toe to toe with such a, such a stacked alliance on the other side of the field was, was pretty incredible. So congratulations to them. Uh, and like you said, really tight turnaround time to uh, New England district champs this weekend. And even turn around after that to Houston. So it's going to be quite the whirlwind uh, weekend coming up for a lot of teams. All right, before nice, we get into good. our... So that was our... Uh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, before we get into our top uh, 20, which we'll do in, in yeah, just a moment there, uh, we're just going to uh, take a quick moment to uh, thank our friends at uh, Kettering University uh, for uh, being an awesome place. If you're interested in uh, going to university, that is uh, has a lot of people that are in first and about 30% of their, high school, of their uh, class currently at uh, Kettering. It comes from high school robotics. So here's a little bit more about Kettering University and, and, and getting financial aid at Kettering. When I was considering where to go to college, one of the biggest things for me was figuring out how I was going to be able to pay for college. And it wasn't really until I came to Kettering to one of the Dog Days of Summer events that I figured out how I was going to be able to do that. And it was actually because of this senior chemical engineering student. She was getting ready to graduate and she had told me about all of her phenomenal experiences both on co-op and here on campus. But more importantly, she told me that she was going to graduate debt free. And that was an eye-opener for me. That was the first time I'd ever heard that from a college student, and so that's when I knew that I was sold. So really from there, as soon as I came to Kettering, I knew that that was gonna be my goal. I wanted to graduate debt-free. And I did that through a variety of ways. First, of course, the co-op experience was a tremendous help, but I even looked to, uh, ways to work here on campus. So I was a federal work-study student. I worked in a variety of organizations, and that not only gave me the extra funds, but also different opportunities to meet people and understand our resources here at Kettering. Also looking at scholarships, not only here at Kettering University, but even from my hometown and other sources, all of this cumulatively helped me to graduate debt free. All right, thank you to Kettering for that. And thank you for your support and help for the show. That gets us into our next group of five. Leading it off at our 20th spot is going to be Team 2481 from Tremont, Illinois and Tremont High School. It's the Roboteers. They have an overall record of 42-11-1, and, and they were the winners of the Green Country Regional. So two finalist appearances, both at Central Illinois and St. Louis. 2481 made that last-minute regional addition uh, and took the field in Tulsa looking for that championship spot. They would uh, place first overall with 11 and one record and, and would pick up that 
a top 25 favorite, one we haven't talked about much this year, 1986. And with the help of 87-11 would win the event uh, the event in six matches. So uh, the Roboteers have an, kind of this oblong-shaped robot with swerve and a, a tall shooter. And we really finally got to see that Truss Traverse Climber more often uh, and can climb up in just in under five seconds. I know Tyler was telling us, uh, I think they were looking at adding some more sensors and stuff to mm-hmm. really um, make that a bit faster. And it was just so cool to see a team that does it just so differently uh, than the rest of the season. So uh, just a great late match strategy because, you know, you, you might have two other Traverse bots uh, at some point up there taking up that, and then you can kind of continue to shoot and then just come in there at the last uh, few seconds to, for that Traverse climb. So, um I believe Tyler, you did say that it was kind of a last minute addition for them to go to this regional. Um, yeah, they they had they literally added less like last week, like right after yeah. their last event where they got finalists again. Yeah, at, two uh, I think it was Saint, I think it was St. Louis they were finalists. Yeah, St. Louis and uh, Central Illinois. Yeah. Yep. Um, so then they added that to uh, go to this one and uh, get that shot to go to champs, uh, and yeah. yeah, really well deserved. Uh, I didn't actually I didn't talk to anybody from. Uh, 2041 specifically about what sensors they added or if they did. I'm going to assume that they did uh, on there from the last time I spoke with them, but I don't actually know if they did add any uh, in particular. I'm just going to fast forward. If you haven't seen 2041's climb, I don't know where you've been if you haven't seen their climb, but it's in the right side of the screen right now. And it's yeah. really, really cool. It's just so cool. I mean, it still gets everybody so hyped. You know, we saw that yeah. last a couple of weeks ago with the, no, I forget their team number, out of out of um, Canada. You know, just teams that are yep. approaching this. 4907, so I think. Know. Yeah, it sounds right. Uh, yeah, just teams that are approaching this so differently is just, you know, there's just a little bit of hype, a few extra eyeballs there at the end game watching. So congratulations to 2481. Yeah, I'm excited to see them back. Uh, I will say uh, I, I was hoping we we're going to hear maybe a little bit more from 1986 in the top 25, uh, but they did not make it on there. But another team that uh, has been performing uh, well um, that we used to talk a lot about, I feel like we haven't for a little bit of time and hope we get to hear more about them later on too. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, moving on, our 19th ranked team is 1771 from Suing, Georgia, in North Gwinnett High School. It's the North Gwinnett Robotics team. An overall record of 50 and four, they were the winners of the Peach Tree District Championship event. So, what a season for this team! They picked up wins at both of their district events, which was Dalton and Carrollton. Uh, both in both, they would take. The- the number one seeds and they would go 17 and one in both of those. So high hopes for this team as they entered the district championship this past weekend. And they would once again, take that number one seed. They have the kind of that really tall, their shooters like really centered over, uh, over the robot and their swerve is just really smooth. And their, their shot is accurate and just has a nice, really smooth arc to it. Uh, they picked up two autonomous awards this season, as well as an innovation and control award. Um, so just kind of just shows you how well-rounded this robot is and how well it performs. Uh, so great season for them, two district wins, a district championship win, and uh, just a lot of momentum as they head to uh, championships. So good luck and congratulations to the North Gwinnett Robotics. This is an elite team that I think, uh, you know, I'm glad that they're at 19th, but needs to be quite a bit higher, uh, you know, coming out of Pete's tree where, you know, it, the field isn't as strong uh, necessarily compared to some other areas. Uh, I, I think I can pretty confidently say that. Uh, but this team, once again, that was a team that won that one V three semifinal match last time we talked about them. And now uh, oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely doing a, a phenomenal job here at Pete's tree uh, DCMP. Uh, and I mean, this team could, could be a lock uh, at a, at a division, uh, preview uh, definitely in the upper echelon for it, but they actually have a potential to be a lock for division two. Nice. So moving on to our 18th team, it's going to be 1796 from Queens, New York and Queens technical high school. It's the robo tigers, an overall record of 27 and seven. They were the winners of the New York city regional. So this earlier this season, the robo tigers would pick up a finalist medal at the SBPLI number two regional and look to the field this past weekend for some gold. They would go a perfect 10 and 0 with a 3.3 ranking score average and put them in second but would be selected uh, first overall by 694. I believe it was. Yep. I, was pulse, like high pulse. I think so. Yep. 1796 has a lower profile robot that swerves around the field. Their cargo shots don't bounce too much in the hub, which obviously helps with that bounce out and uh, with more scoring. So quick ish kind of climb at the end, uh, which helps the Alliance and great work from this New York city team. Um, I don't know if they're signed up for champs yet, but I'm hoping that they're going um, and they'll, that they'll get a chance to play in Houston. So congratulations and good luck to 1796, the Robo Tigers. Yeah, I'll agree with uh, Joe Blaze's uh, comment uh, in the Twitch chat that this team was really locked in. They they really were like uh, in uh, uh, Stipulse, uh, another team will be mentioning, I'm sure, a little bit later on too. But 
Uh, this team here, Robo Tigers, I, I feel like we keep mentioning them more and more here uh, on, on FRC Top 25, and we've had our conversations with them. I know we've done it behind the bumpers with them in the past, uh, so I can't wait to talk more to this team at championships as well. Yeah, seven ten six is always one of the uh, just uh, top team in the state. They've won. Uh, I, I forgot. I, I looked recently what their regional streak, uh, regional winning streak was, but it's pretty impressive. Um, I don't. I, I don't know why the Robot Tigers don't get, in my opinion, the credit that they deserve. Yeah, they're one of the best robots in our state. So con- they're so good, so consistently. Uh, we've had a chance to play with and against them uh, at the Long Island Regional a bunch of times. Just a, an awesome, an awesome program. So it's good to see them get some recognition here. Yeah. I'm a big fan of them too. We got to play with them in 2017 on Carson and everybody on the team was just like super nice, super easy to work with, really fun and laid back, but man, they built some damn good robots. For sure. It looks like three regional wins in 2019, three regional, oh no, two regional, three regional wins in 2018. <laughs> Yeah, so 17, that's a, that's, 2017 that's Carver, Carson division winner. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's just nuts. Yeah, you're right. Definitely flies on the radar for New York State for sure. Nice. So that was 1796 and 18th. Our 17th ranked team is team 2046 from Maple Valley, Washington and Tahoma High School. It's bare metal, an overall record of 61 and 13. And they were the winners of a lot of events. <laughs> so heading into... <laughs> Heading into Pacific Northwest District Championships this past weekend, 2048 had, has had one heck of a season. Three district events, three wins, one district chairman's award. Uh, they were poised to make a deep run and, and would do just that. So um, a little surprised to see them uh, 11th overall after qualifications at the district championship event. But obviously a lot of great teams. And when district championship comes around, it's just always you know great matches. You just never know what's going to happen. So they would be selected to the number two seed alliance, and they would walk away uh, finalists there. So bare metal has a well-programmed machine that executes just in all phases of the game. Their climber is super quick uh, at the end of the match and just a phenomenal season from 2046 so far. A team that is just always consistently here in the top 25. Obviously this season, no different, just putting out great, great machines year after year and uh, another great, great season for them. So congratulations and a uh, good luck uh, in Houston for them. This was this was a team where I mentioned uh, I was alluding to earlier where their their end game rating is 527th uh, this week. So I'm not sure if they had climber issues at, at PNW DCMP because I agree with you, Mike. Like before, they had one of the fastest climbers in FRC. I mean, we were seeing like a sub five second climb from this team. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I didn't get I, I didn't get a chance to watch like qualification yeah, matches just... for this team. So I don't I don't know if somebody in chat could uh, enlighten us for that if they had issues in quals or something like that. The uh, the hub cam uh, in there is terrible. <laughs> you didn't you didn't like it? Uh, no, it because was, half of it is it looks it like a cool. toddler smudged <laughs> it. So yeah, it, it, yeah, it does look pretty bad. But I thought it was. I, thought it was a, I, I totally I stole that line from last night. By the way, sorry. So. I thought it was a cool uh, a cool change of pace. I'm like, where is this camera? Oh, it's in the hub. Yeah. That's cool. I, I, yeah, cool. Yes, practical. No, so. Your daughter's had her grimy fingers all over too many yeah. windows that she well, knows I mean, exactly they, what that's like. Hold on. Like, if, you, if you didn't see it, let's, let's see if we can find one real quick. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to yeah, find it in a, in a five-second thing. But if, if they show it, yeah. Like, there's one angle where it's just like you look out, and it's just like it look. It looks like the – It was like right at the beginning of this, <laughs> was it? Of this clip. Yeah. yeah, it looks like the plexiglass has just been, like, smudged. Maybe it has. It's worth. I, I don't it's want worth. Yeah, I, yeah we'll, we'll try to find it later. Oh, here we go. I think too I much. It. Hold on. Right there, <laughs> like it's just giant scratches on it. It's so, like cool, but yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's, it's okay. That's right. Not we, great. We, we can agree to disagree on it. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, by, by the way, shout out to uh, three six uh, three six uh, on there. Who's they got eliminated in the semifinals? But they're they're a team that's part of the open line. So we've highlighted them a couple times. Uh, but a great team and. Uh, uh, they're uh, the team that a lot of people didn't talk about that, that righted themselves as well, too. And I know they're in Clips of the Week, so uh, pretty cool on that. For sure. All right, our last group in uh, this uh, five block is in our 16th spot is Team 3005 from Dallas, Texas, and Emmett J. Conrad High School. It's the RoboChargers, an overall record of 40 and 13. They were the winners of the Fort Worth event. So a few weeks ago, we saw 3005 take the win at the Fort Worth event, and they took the field this past weekend at the Fit District Championship uh, looking for some more hardware. 
Uh, we saw them in the Mercury division and would be selected by the incredible 33-10 to that number one alliance. Easy wins in the quarters and the semis. Uh, we would see uh, number one versus number two in the finals in Mercury. Uh, match one would be won by the second seed by two points. Match two would go to the number one seed by one point. And then a red card would unfortunately be assessed to 305's alliance in finals three. I think we're going to talk about this at some point. Uh, but Robo Chargers have an incredible absolutely like deliberate auto just dominate the tele with their agility and their accuracy. And they really climb out the end as well. Um, so hopefully they'll be competing again here in a couple of weeks or just next week uh, in their home state for the championship event in the same spot. So, uh, same yeah, spot. I mean, we, we, we have talked about, I think the yesterday we talked quite a bit about, uh, Texas DCMP. So I don't want to go into too much on it. You can watch, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, we, this was talked about both last night on roundup where we had, uh, the dry coach of 6,800 Michael on, uh, and then, and I did the recap for this division as well too. So we talked a lot about it, but uh, I think a, a big question a lot of teams are asking is, uh, when you're 33, 10, uh, you pretty much had a choice of three different teams to pick from. Uh, you had, uh, 3005, you had Spectrum and you had Kryptonite 624. Uh, at the time, I, I agree with the 3005 pick uh, as the first pick on there. Uh, 624 got a red card during the quals, which can always be a little bit of a uh, flag uh, on that. Uh, I think 624 cranked it up a bit more in playoffs than, than what like 3005 did, but going in, it was the right pick. I think their team is still phenomenal. Uh, they had they have a district win under their belt from before, uh, and I thought they were a great partner for 3310. The the Lions just ended up having some issues, unfortunately, some robot issues, a red card in the finals, all that fun stuff uh, that just led to their demise. But overall, a fantastic team and, and complemented the Alliance, I thought, very well. Great. Thank you for that insight. I know we'll be talking about a few, about a few more uh, Texas teams yeah. coming up. So. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll we, we, we don't your, have to mention uh, it every time, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be we're definitely leaning be on your eyes for that. All right, so with that, that uh, gets us through between Justin and myself, that gets us through 25 through 16, and Christine's going to take us uh, kind of through our next five. Yep, so at number 15, we are taking it to the West Coast with Team 4414 from Ventura, California. It's high tide. Um, and their overall record, I'm going to double check because I forgot to grab it off the blue lines because. I was actually shocked. I completely forgot that there was Aerospace Valley this weekend because right. it was an event where 4414 got to show up and really shine on their you. own. So they got to round out their 2022 three champs run. What? 484 and one. I looked up. 484 and one. Thank you. That's pretty good. So rounding out their 2022 mm -hmm. pre champs run, they went to the Aerospace Valley Regional and they picked up another blue banner and picked up an industrial design award. That's three technical awards for this team this year, which is pretty amazing. They High Tide came into their final event ready to light up the upper hub this past weekend. They ranked third after going 9 and 3 in quals and would be picked by the first or number one seeded alliance or seeded team of 5199 robot dolphins from outer space. Um, and they would pick up team 5526, the T Cats. Um, finals one were really close, and up until the finals, they were pretty much unmatched when it came to scoring in the upper hub and just getting ahead that way. They were going shot for shot in the finals, though, with a really tough, um, number two powerful alliance, which was one of the other really strong upper hub shooting alliances there, which was capped by 3647. Um, the first finals match would get really close with a score of 120 to 90. 90 something. <laughs> 96. That's what it was. Right. Um, edging mount. Uh, and then their double traversal climb that came out on top was really what edged out that powerful number two alliance. Um, I was really excited to see them do that, do this well this past weekend. I was surprised that they didn't end up ranking higher, but it was nice to see them pair up and really shine on their own with Team 5199, who also had a really great performance this past weekend. Mm -hmm. um, overall, it was really great to see 41 or 4414 just get better and better throughout the season. They played some really at some really difficult West Coast events, and I really think that they're going to be a strong contender in Houston next weekend. Um, any other thoughts before I we? I can't believe they're only 15th. So like, this team needs to be up uh, in the top 10, in my opinion. But uh, I think yeah. one thing I noticed about the event that they were at is there there weren't a lot of other you know high high scoring matches going yeah, on that, except the ones that were fair. you know having the finals. Yeah, I mean definitely yeah, I mean, over, I feel, uh, yeah, I feel like we talk about high t high tide when they whenever they come up is that this is a team that as of the last couple of years. 
um, is really starting to make their mark in the, the top 25 and just having is putting together, you know, consistent season one after another. So I think, you know, going forward, well, that, that trend will continue. It's always great to see them. And yeah, Tyler, I mean, you're saying they're a little low here and just great to see them, you know, really competing at such a high level, not yeah. just top 25 team, but like a top 10 team. Yeah, they're they're in a, they're a, they're a tier one elite team in my opinion. Maybe you know are are they the highest of the high tier one? No, but they're they're they have eclipsed that in, into that bracket in my opinion. Absolutely. <clears throat> moving on, we are going to be moving on to number fourteen. It is Team Six Ninety Four from New York, New York. It and Stuyve in High School. It's Stuyve Pulse, like High Pulse, with an overall <laughs> season record of forty four six and zero. They were the winners of the New York City Regional. Dean List. Dean's List semifinalist winner, and they took home the Innovation and Control Award. So starting their season as finalists at the Finger Lakes Regional, Stipulse went on a bi-weekly quest for a champs bid and more banners and awards. They ranked first after going 9-1 and one in quals this past weekend with a rank score of 3.4. And they went on to pick one of my favorite teams that we just saw here on the top 25, um, Team 1796 Roa Tigers out of Queens, and then they scooped up the Basement Lions 5806 from the Bronx, where my sister and dad went to school, Manhattan College Jaspers, what up? Um, and then they would go on to really sweep the play or the uh, semi or the quarterfinals and semis um, with 1796's upper hub shooting. And I know Mike wants to talk a bit about 694's playoff auto. Um, with all of that combined, they sorry <laughs> they went on to face a really good number two alliance um mike do you want to talk about their playoff auto yeah i think i saw when i was maybe looking up um the robot tigers is just that their alliance use kind of something i feel like we're not seeing very often we saw it more in previous years but um 694 grabbed they put a cargo on their third robot not not robot tigers but it was their third robot i think they put it on their bumper and then in auto, they let 1796 um, take kind of that right side of the field. And then 694 shot theirs and then grabbed, um, grabbed the one. They kind of did, I forget what we used to call that uh, back in 2012, maybe. I think we saw it a lot. But um, yeah, it was just cool to kind of see them you work together and, and figure that out through, uh, through autonomous, just because we haven't seen it all, all that much. And especially in a game like here where um, it could be really useful. Yeah, literally every piece of cargo matters so it's i think we're seeing mm -hmm. some unique strategy in that sense where you know we were seeing um some defensive autoplay and now we're seeing like okay we're not just gonna not have our alliance partner use this piece of cargo we're gonna use it ourselves so well done to 694 i thought it was crazy that they were i think they what they went what two four six for competition weeks they hit up all the even ones oh it could be mm -hmm. yeah so we'll be seeing them in Houston. So good luck to Stipulse like Hypulse. Very frequent flyer in the top 25. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are at number 13. We're going back down to Texas with Team 3847. From Houston, Texas, it's that purple and white team, Team Spectrum. With an overall record of 48-9-0, 3847 went 16-3-0 at Texas Championships, winning the Mercury Division alongside... 624 and 7 76 16. After three hard vault matches in the Mercury Division finals, Spectrum and company upset the number one overall seed and went to play on in the grand finals. The Mercury champs fought hard, ultimately ending up state champion Texas State Championship finalists. Um, Spectrum put on an incredible form performance with their fast swerve drive, quick shooting, and their repeatable fast climber that inspired many others this season to put up to put to good use. Um, their alliance played extremely well together and showed us what rapid react looks like at the highest levels of gameplay. Many teams likely looking to Texas finals um, as a great reference for divisional play as we start to look at district championships and worlds coming up this week. So congratulations to Team Spectrum. I'm excited to see them in person because I feel like I haven't seen any of their robots in person since maybe the last time I went to IRI if they were even at that event. So. Mm -hmm. Well done on them. And it is really neat to see that so many teams are really not only just starting off the season with inspiration from, you know, their past robots and a lot of their build blogs, but even currently from, you know, their experiences this season, we see a lot of iteration going on. So congratulations to them. A couple of things to chime in about uh, Spectrum. So uh, Spectrum, uh, to me, really turned it on when it came to playoffs. Uh, coming in, I think they were a, a national on below, like the – 
the 3310, the 624, and the 3005 uh, sort of thing. But when they got in the playoffs, uh, to me, they really were able to turn it on. Now, they weren't perfect, so don't get me wrong. They had a couple missed shots. Uh, they had a couple climber issues in regards to getting up on the climb, uh, that sort of thing. But uh, overall, uh, a really good robot nonetheless. Actually, I think I think this match is where they fell, uh, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is one where, where the climber did fall. So, you know, a couple, a couple issues on it. But with that said, uh, they were really able to complete the 624 alliance really, really well. Uh, and in my opinion, definitely earned that spot where they are. And it's definitely showed significant improvement almost right when playoffs started. Like, it's just like the gasoline kicked in. And they're doing really well. Apparently, by the way, we just have videos queued up of robots tipping over and falling in this uh, top 25 because there's definitely going to be at least one more. I'll promise you that. <laughs> I'm sure no one saw that, though. <laughs> oh, uh, so so, sorry. 12. Side note, I was going to say we do have a behind the bumpers for this and mostly uh, Texas teams coming out soon. So keep an eye out for that. Sorry about that, Christine. No worries. So we're staying in Texas for this one. At number 12, we have Team 118 from League City, Texas. It's the Robonauts. 118's overall record stands at 56-11-0 currently, and after an 8-6 and six showing on the Apollo Division at Texas Champs, um, 118's robot continued to perform at a high level as they dinked and dunked around the field through a spicy <laughs> Apollo Division. Finding themselves in the position of number three alliance captain, we saw our space-themed friend pick up a highly defensive alliance with 87-49 and 54-11 uh, to try to shake things up in the strategy in Apollo. Um, after a couple of very captivating quarterfinals matches, 118's day was over, which blew my mind. Um, of course, their season isn't done yet. They had already punched their ticket at the Bayer Regional earlier this season and will likely be bringing even more firepower to Houston next week. I'm so conflicted on this team because they, they had a really tough schedule uh, on their division. So I, they, unfortunately this robot has gotten to play second fiddle so many times this year with the exception of Bayou. Um, I mean, it's, it's a great robot overall and it performed well, um, you know, for this week, 12th. Yeah. Um, one of the things I uh, talking to, uh, I talked to their Alliance captain, the, the person who did the Alliance selection. Uh, I asked her after Alliance selection, Hey, you know, uh, you guys, you, you went a different route. Uh, what made you pick, uh, your Alliance partner, which was, uh, uh, it was an 8,000 team it was a rookie team. That was a sword drive defensive bot. Uh, and they, they just said like, Hey, we want to change things up, uh, going into it. Uh, when you look at it, who you're up against with the number one Alliance with 6,800 and, uh, 148 and the number two line said 2468 and 4206. Uh, you know, if we pick the next best score, are we going to win? And, you know, the answer is probably no on that. So they went with a different strategy to see if it would work, if it could be done by playing, you know, some shutdown defense and relying on 118 to be the primary score. Now, close matches, it didn't work out for them, but you know, I got to commend them for trying out a different strategy and, uh, and seeing if it would work. Uh, they're a team that, you know, you know, is going to go to world championships anyway. So I kind of like the go for broke strategy. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great, that's a great thought Tyler, because I think we talked about a couple of weeks ago offline, just about where, where certain teams will fall kind of, uh, in the top eight and then what yeah. teams are going to be left. So, I mean, that was really kind of, and, and it still could be a viable strategy at championship here next week, but um, really kind of just seeing if this could work. And they knew, you know, they knew, um, like you said, they knew they had their ticket to championship. Um, but is this something that could work? And if a team finds themselves in that eight position and they're, you know, facing the, the 254, 1678 alliance, you know, will this actually kind of work? And I, I like that. I think it was kind of, uh, it was yeah. a great experiment for all of us to take a look at. And ultimately, if, you know, if when divisions come out, a weaker division who knows they have to play, you know, a 254, 1690 uh, on Einstein, like you have to think about, you know, if, if your goal is to win a championship, yeah, you want to get out of your division, but you have to think about what can you do that's a little bit unique, a little bit different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you know you have to face a, you know, a really a powerhouse alliance uh, on Einstein. And thanks Very for, cool. you know, instilling that nightmarish into our heads, Justin. No problem. I'm not getting any <laughs> sleep, so I figure none of you should either. Perfect. I was gonna say, like, it's been zero days since Justin's been worrying about 1690, and now 54 potentially with 1690. <laughs> I feel like we should just have like a, a group meetup before, <laughs> like, a wellness check. Like, yeah. how are you feeling today about 1690? Just real excited to breathe the same air as them and see the robot. <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe it'll turn into fangirl mode when you get there, Justin. It, like, the fear will just turn into pure hype, and you'll just, like, have your Beatles mania moment. Well, I do love them. I mean, we were we allied with them in 2016 when we were world finalists, so I wish nothing but the best for them. Um, it just is nightmare-inducing, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of nightmare-inducing, at number 11, we have an incredible team that typically does instill the fear of many things into many people at Champs. Team 1114. Uh no stranger to the top 25 it's that powerhouse team from up north it's the simbots with an overall record of 18 9 and 0 11 14 won 11 and 2 overall um the weekend at saint mary's day one finishing up ranked number two they were chosen by 2056 as most famous frc pairing of all time got back together um in classic fashion the number one alliance went six and zero in eliminations and took home the saint mary's day one championship the Simbots improved dra- dramatically from their uh, last showing. It's yeah. easy to forget that many of these Ontario teams have had three or four week delays to their season. So seeing them start hit the stride now um, should have all of their teams taking notice big time. Uh, with the extra couple of weeks we've seen their swerve really start to take form and the distance shooting tremendously improve on 11-14. Uh, the Alliance was able to put cargo scores up there with some of the most competitive regionals. All eyes should shift to Ontario Provincial Championships, where we expect to see 11-14 in their usual spot, fighting at the end for another championship. One of the things real quick I want to mention with uh, stats that are on this, two things uh, for that. One, uh, ELO for a team like 11-14, where they had uh, a performance that wasn't up to their liking, their ELO is not going to go up enough in one event to really make that much of a difference. So you're going to see a team like that have a lower ELO uh, versus it. And then when you have an event – where there's only uh, – how many teams are this? Like 14 or something like that? Uh, it does make it a little bit tougher to get those stats up a little bit higher because your variety of teams isn't as much there. Uh, and, you know, your the overall power of those teams might not be quite – at what it would be at a different event because it's not as deep, that sort of thing like that. So, uh, you know, keep take the stats with a grain of salt with the one-day event uh, teams on there because uh, that can be a little bit skewed because of that. Uh, I think 11-14, uh, I think them and uh, Cyber Knights this week, most improved teams we've seen week over week or event over event at least uh, going in. Absolutely. Okay, so that gives us to our top 10. Before we get there, we're going to take another um, break to hear from one of our sponsors. Yep, and then we got Clips of the Week coming up too. So, yeah, uh, sponsor yes, time, everybody. We got new emote in chat. Uh, please spam the uh, money sponsor uh, emote that we have uh, for that so we can have fun with it. But, yeah, we're going to uh, give a big thanks to uh, Striker and Striker Careers uh, for their incredible support of First Updates. Now, uh, you guys know that without them, we wouldn't have fun. It's just true uh, for that. They have really stepped up to make make it possible for us to, to create the content what we do. And if you're not familiar with them, a leading medical manufacturer uh, where you can uh, go work at a place that actually cares about you being in first you can change the world by creating the leading medical manufacturing technology equipment and uh before we get a little bit more into that we're actually going to hear a brief word about their culture on striker hi my name is anna sitar i am a mechanical engineering major from western michigan university and i'm working this summer in the nsc department at striker in high speed drills the culture of striker is like nothing i've ever experienced before here we have motivated, driven people who are constantly looking to make healthcare better. And that helps you be engaged at work, be surrounded with people that you enjoy, and also get work done much more efficiently. This summer is my third internship with Stryker, and I constantly want to keep coming back. Every time that I walk through the building, I know that I feel like I'm surrounded by family and I'm giving challenging work that is really making a difference in healthcare. And I see myself working for this company long term because who wouldn't want to work somewhere where you're constantly being challenged, constantly being pushed, and your work is really making a difference in the world. Alrighty, thank you so much to Striker uh, for their support and sponsorship of the show. So Clips of the Week, number six. Um, this is uh, if you'd like to submit kind of uh, a great clip that happened, something funny, something a great play, all sorts of stuff. We are accepting those each and every week in our Discord. So discord.gg slash first updates now. Uh, you can submit them in here. And with that, let's take a look at uh, this week's Clips of the Week. Shots up and in by Spectrum on the Blue Alliance. It's now 12 point lead for the Red Alliance. Oh, and look at that. Let's go! 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 Let's go!
It looks like Blue Alliance is going for a triple. And Blue Alliance has a triple. Hey! Grabbers to try again. They've got one more piece of cargo. Plenty of time left in the match. Oh my goodness. 36 36 has fallen over, and they're trying to self right. We'll see if they can pull that off. 10 seconds left in the match now. Blue Alliance 32 18 working their way to the traversal run. Reload, human player, long range shot. It is in for the Sotobot human player. He's able to. And the red human player also lands. So God. Go! Here's our tiebreaker to figure out who will be our fourth and final semifinals here at the ch first Chesapeake District Championship. Lots of cargo going in that upper hub. Looks like about equal cargo there. We'll see how we come out here at the very end. 5587 placing a few last ones in there. Sure to keep an eye on Jack at the ball. We'll see if they can pull up that six ball auto. Two up so far and one in. That's the third. They're going to feed in two from their human player, swerving around through their hangar zone. That's two more cargo up and in, picking up that six. We'll see if they get in as time expires. They do. All right. So. Uh, I'm going to pick up here. I have 10 through 6, and we're going to start here in the 10th spot with Team 971 from Mountain View, California. Mountain View High School at Spartan Robotics, 27 and 8 overall, and with the winners of the Silicon Valley, or finalists, I'm sorry, at the Silicon Valley Regional. So a quick peek uh, at the team list for SVR. You knew it was going to be a battle for the top spot. 971 finished third and captain the number 2 alliance along with 604 Quicksilver and 8404. Remember, the top 25 isn't always about winning, but highlighting the best robots of the week, and 971 certainly fits the bill. In the playoffs, they ran a slick 5 ball autopath, and during their match, the turret allowed them to keep scoring in the face of some tough, tough defense. The alliance strategy was to keep 971 scoring as late as possible, while 604 and 8404 handled the traverse duties. The number 1 alliance was tough, in the finals um, and, and um, ultimately took the win, but 971 did pick up that all important wild card as their ticket to Houston. So I hope everyone going uh, has a chance to check out 971's awesome machine. They're always doing some crazy engineering stuff. Uh, and congrats to 971 Spartan Robotics sitting here in the top 10. Tower, sitting here in the top 10, no wins. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I, I'm okay with that. 971 I think is, has, a, has a great machine for that. I think 10 is appropriate uh, for them. I don't know yeah. if I had them much higher. Uh, for something like that. But no, I, I think it's appropriate. I think, as you said, Justin, it's about your robot performance for the top 25, not necessarily your wins uh, for things. And I do uh, think that they could go to a different event and probably quite handily beat uh, some winners yes. at other events. Yep. Like I said, that, that team was at Silicon Valley was was tough. Yeah. That was tough. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm I mean, 971 is kind of like the they're kind of like the 118 this year of California, right? Where they yeah. just they're they're that third robot in that group that just gets left out, unfortunately. So they end up, you know, not winning the event, but it doesn't mean they don't have a phenomenal machine, nonetheless. It's the most 971 way to enter the top 20. Yeah, there you go, right? So. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go into single digits in the ninth spot. Uh, one of my favorite all-time teams, Team 2056 from Stony Creek, Ontario, Canada. Orchard Park Secondary School, OP Robotics, 19-6 and six overall. And with the winners, the St. Mary's District event. So it was great to watch 2056 all weekend long as they battled through nine qualification matches to earn them the top spot. They picked longtime friends 11-14 and added 80-89 and set their sights on adding another blue banner. The Alliance blew the doors off the place in the first two matches, setting scores of 130 and 152 in the finals against the number two seed it was 2056 uh ran their shoot on the run five ball auto and were unstoppable on teleop scoring from all over through defense even added a blue cargo here or there didn't really matter uh the alliance was at or near 40 cargo in the high hub and the double traverse from 2056 and 1114 was too much for anybody to overcome so another win for 2056 they look to win back the provincial championship this year so good luck to 2056 op robotics it was just one of those post-covid feel-good moments for me to watch 2056 1114 right uh win another yeah. event together mm -hmm. yeah after their semifinalist outing at uh in waterloo um 
just really, you know, knew that that there was you know, the best was still yet to come for them. And uh, really, like you said, Tyler or Justin, you know, just the 26 11 14 combo. Just there's there's nothing that will ever beat that. And great to see them pick up that win this past weekend. The, the only thing I'll say um, from like the the 11 14 20 56 combo, I will say that overall, I think that combo versus maybe some of the other combos we've seen at like Texas or California or something like that, uh, I, I would probably not put as strong as something like that. If you look at their cargo throughput of what they're scoring, you know, we, we saw 6,800 in one of their matches scored 60 cargo uh, with, with their alliance partners. Right. So I don't think they're, they're quite at that level yet. Uh, but on the other hand, they also started in week four of the competition season yeah. uh, and Im- have improved quite a bit. So uh, come champs. Uh, yeah. I think they will be up there and I think they will be at that level. For sure. Somebody in chat's asking 2056 best non swerve. Mm. I I think that could definitely be a very true fact coming into Houston. Up there, maybe. 973 I really like a lot, too. 973 is really good, too, yeah. Yeah, but by the time 2056 is like... Exactly right. Yeah, it's 2056. I'm not not doubting them at all. No, I know. I I just think her point's well taken, right? So 2056 is a little bit behind where 973 has, you know, has a a time advantage and experience advantage. But, you know, come playoffs on Houston, uh, I don't know who I would necessarily, uh, I don't think I'd be able to bet against them. All right, so we're going to continue in A spot and talk about Team 111 from Arlington Heights, Illinois. It's the Hall of Famers Wild Stang, 32-1 and one overall, and with the winners of the Central Illinois and Midwest Regionals. So the Midwest Regional featured tough competition, as it always does, and Wild Stang fought their way to the number four spot after qualification matches, and they were selected to join the number one alliance from 23-38 Garrett Ford, and along with 81-22 headed to the playoffs. 111 primarily ran their five-ball auto, but what impressed me most was Wild Stang's confidence and pickup scoring skills on the far side of the field uh i've been behind the glass the visibility can get really really bad this year um and several alliances struggle as cargo accumulates on the far side of the field but wild, wild stang skilled drivers um and shooting really make it look easy uh and the 36 alliance hangar score at the end of the match ultimately put them over the top and gave wild stang their second win of the season so good luck in houston to 111 wild stang yeah, the rankings in these final few matches are kind of crazy because you had 1732 that was on top after uh, after Friday, uh, and then the rankings shifted just slightly, which allowed uh, 111 uh, and 2338 to pair up together, uh, which made a fantastic alliance. And it was a great final as well, too. Uh, and I also just want to give a, a shout out uh, 2451 Ponage, uh, who got three finalists uh, and didn't qualify, and then they got engineering inspiration, so they were able to qualify. So I'm excited to see that robot at championships mm. as well. But yeah, 111 talked about them. I saw them at CIR. We have a couple interviews with them. Uh, phenomenal team, did really well. And their counterpart robot, uh, 112, actually did uh, quite well too, the plus one team. So uh, yeah, Wild Sing back in top tier form that many of us uh, old boomers uh, expect out of this team. <laughs> Definitely up there. <laughs> yeah, all right. You'd Absolutely. love to see it. Right. All right. So moving uh, from eight to seven, we're going to talk about team 624 from Katy, Texas, Cinco Ranch High School. It's kryptonite. 46 and nine overall with winners, the Pasadena District event and their division at the first in Texas District Championship. Is it state championship? I actually don't know now. That's just, 624 it's because ha- there's New Mexico. All right. Gotcha. Uh, so 624 ha- has had an awesome robot all season long and are getting their recognition here in the top 10. After a semifinal exit at their first event, they improved to win their next and ultimately looked to win the FIT championship. They were the number two alliance captain in the 40 team Mercury division. They, along with 38 47 Spectrum and 76 16, set their sights on the playoffs. After stomping their way through quarters and semifinals, they faced a tough number one alliance in the Mercury finals. Finals one saw the number two alliance. Uh, squeak out a win by just two points, one cargo ball. Uh, finals two saw the number one alliance force the rubber match uh, in match two, and then uh, unfortunate red card in match three. Um, or with a red card in match three, I'm sorry, the number two alliance was able to advance to the grand finals. So 624 battled hard. They would eventually fall in the grand finals, but a great robot, a great performance from 624, and we'll be able to see them on the field again in Houston. Yeah, 624 absolutely ignited going to the playoffs. Like, their cargo throughput uh, was so impressive as they went through, and they did really, really well uh, for that. Um, And uh, since it just happened, we'll talk about the red card really briefly uh, in a second here. But the finals here, uh, regardless of the outcome, was absolutely incredible uh, watching the 3310, 3005 alliance go up against 624 and 3847. Uh, man, as, as Mike said before with match one and two, two points, blue wins, one point, red wins, and then you have the tip over red oh, card. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, 
we we talked about this on previous things. I did a fun analysis on it stuff too. I disagree with the red card personally on there. I think uh, based on the blue box rules that I read, I would not have inter- interpreted that way, but it is an interpretation. Uh, and uh, 624 and their line still extremely deserving of going into the grand finals. And they put up a heck of a fight against 6,800 and 148, uh, falling, falling just short uh, of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, this team is, uh, man, that they improve uh, between events and they are looking really, really good. Yeah, and if you want to know how, just how good the Grand Finals were, pick any, and take nothing away from any other events, but pick Finals matches from any two events, watch it, and then watch those Finals. The yep. The match looks like it's in Fast Forward. Like, the robots, <laughs> everything's does. going so much faster. It's just absolutely crazy uh, how good those teams are. All six teams on the field were really impressive. Yeah. And and by the way, I think 624 being in, like, uh, between 5 and 10, I think is an appropriate spot for them. Uh, you know, that. They, they think still have a little bit of improvements in their cycle times they can do uh, on there. Sometimes they, I, I feel like they go a little bit too fast sometimes uh, for what they should. So a little bit of control. Um, and I think uh, they'll be right up there and they are already up there, but if they want to maybe just inch a little bit more, that's where I would see that happening. Um, one, other, one other thing I'll mention the grand finals too, uh, is that uh, there, there was a thing where 624 waited the climb, uh, while they're waiting for their Alliance Partner Spectrum to climb. And I think a mistake was made in that where they could have quite potentially won uh, at least uh, one of the matches, the grand finals, to push it to three. So, uh, you know, uh, this is nitpicking at this point, but we're also in the top 10. That's where that happens. Uh, and I can't wait to see 624 play again. Uh, a great team. They, uh, once again, another team we did an interview with was a very enthusiastic team, very descriptive of the robot. So make sure you take a look once that comes out. Awesome. So my last team for the night uh, in the sixth spot here is Team 2910 from Mill Creek, Washington. Henry Jackson High School, it's Jack in the Bot. 68 match wins, only five losses. And with the winners of the <clears throat> Glacier Peak, Sun Dome, Bonnie Lake District <laughs> events, and won the PNW District Championship this past weekend. So Jack in the Bot has won a lot recently. Four wins this year. Two wins in 2022. I don't even think two events happened in 2022. They somehow got two banners. Right. Four wins in 2019. Three wins in 2018. You get the idea. It's just crazy how often they're winning and just absolutely dominating the Pacific Northwest. So Jack in the Bot was the number one seed after the qualification matches. Their playoff alliance included 49-11 and 32-18. After a tough red card in quarterfinal match two, uh, the alliance quickly shrugged it off, topping out at 150 unpenalized points in semifinal in the semifinals and brought it home in the finals with a slick double traverse um, from 29-10 and 49-11. And they're just full of confidence uh, for good reason. I just mentioned how often they're winning. Uh, and I think they're really ready to make an honest run um, to Einstein in Houston. So good luck to 29-10, Jack in the Bot. I don't know if anybody saw the clips of the week, but there was that one where 29-10 did their autonomous and they swung – through the hangar. Yeah, it yeah. turns out that was just nuts. Uh, so really Im- impressive uh, with that. Their teleop scoring is absolutely incredible. Uh, I agree with chat. Uh, you know, would I put them higher? Yes. The problem is when we talk about these top five, man, like which one do you put them after? I, like I, I think all these teams are just kind of this six through one, I think is very grouped together. And uh, I could see them being in any of those spots. Uh, they're, they are, they're an elite team. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, we talked about them last time looking for vindication from 2019 champs where they got knocked out in quarters. Man, you better – I mean, I'm, I'm sure they want it, but you really expecting them to see uh, them in the finals of the division, if not Einstein for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, so that was 10 through 6. And now before we get into our uh, top five, we have a couple of things we're going to do. We're going to start our giveaway here, then we're going to go through kind of look at some of the other teams that were in our top 50. Yeah, we're going to do our giveaway from our friends at uh, Rev Robotics, who's giving away a $25 gift card. So if you're interested in that nice $25 gift card from Rev Robotics, we do have a keyword uh, that you'll have to type in in chat. Uh, don't forget, you also need to be following in order to be eligible to win, and subscribers do get extra luck. We just you know, we just rig it that way for them. So, uh, But, yeah, once again, you're going to type in hashtag Rev Does More, Rev Does More, hash, or hashtag Rev Does More, just like we put in chat. Type that in. That's your opportunity to win. We'll draw for it after the uh, number one team has been announced. Uh, thanks again to Rev, and uh, we'll draw for that very soon. So um, we'll bring up the uh, top 50, by the way. So give me just a second here so we can do that. Uh, top 50, once again, we'll show off teams uh, that just were outside the uh, top 25. There, are, And as I mentioned, you know, going to the show, there are definitely some of these teams that very well could be on the top 25. I think the, there's a couple, there's couple later on that maybe are a little questionable, but here it is. Uh, if we look on here, 
Uh, I mean, there, there's some teams that, you know, are, are just on the cusp that could very well be uh, in that top 25. Uh, I mean, pretty much any of these teams through 40, I think for sure, uh, I could see on the top 25. So uh, I don't know who wants to start, but anybody want to talk about what teams, uh, team or teams didn't make it that you feel should? Yeah, one that stuck out to me um, was the easy one is 1986, Team Titanium. Yeah. Uh, they have two regional wins of the year. Uh, Greater Kansas City and Green Country. They're 31 and six. Um, great season. And I know we talked about uh, kind of just briefly when we talked about the Roboteers uh, at Green Country, but uh, they will be going to championship. It made me kind of reminisce back in 2013, um, really kind of dominated the scene. I don't even forget what it was called. Um, when they showed off their reveal video, when they could climb the, the center structure, I can't remember what it was uh, in aerial assist. But you should just, if you haven't seen that, you should like, that was really kind of peak FRC top 25 back then. Just type in like 2013 T titanium uh, reveal video. And that's a, it's a great one to watch. Uh, but yeah, 1986 one, another one that just, we haven't really talked about much this season, uh, which is a great chairman's team as well as a great robot team uh, would be up from uh, Canada would be 1241 theory six. Um, haven't really heard much of them. Uh, they, it looks like they went to four events this year. They, they're in the top four 25 district. at least once, I know. Yeah, four district events, uh, finalist, uh, semifinalist, finalist, and finalist. So, wait, no, no, they won. This, see, this is all messed up. Never mind. So they do have some wins, I think, in the yeah, year. But Yeah, it's going to um, look weird on TBA because it's a, a, yeah, a one-day yeah. event thing. Yeah. but um, So those are, those are two that stuck out to me. Christine, any for you? Yeah, Mike took the ones that I would have taken. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Thanks a lot. I am noticing, though, like some of the teams that like I was really like that were really, really good in 2017, where, again, they were a lot of the boiler shooters are the teams that are doing really, really well this year. And two of them that Mike just mentioned that are doing really well, but we're not we hadn't seen as much of on the top 25. Um I would definitely agree with 1241, especially after watching some of the footage that we were just showing in the 1114 and 2056 matches at the past event that they were at this past weekend. Um, but, and then just going off of past uh, top 25s, like I know Quicksilver was doing fairly well this year. Yeah, they were, they're in top 25, their, yeah. last, their last appearance. So I, I was surprised to see them at, in the like lower, or in the, you know, mid or well i'm really tired today in the 40s so yeah yeah justin how about you man so this is gonna be a lame answer but i actually not sure i could replace any of the teams in the top 25 with like any of these teams like these are yeah. great teams but actually i'm really confident uh in the tw top 25 we have this week um so yeah i'm leaving that i'm kind of with you man like <laughs> and i said that earlier like yeah there's some we can do there but i don't know who you drop out that's the thing mm -hmm. like i mean right get, we're gonna, have to, be, we're gonna have to be FRC to top. Drop out. It was who did you think was <laughs> right. not high enough? I, I think we're gonna need to be FRC <laughs> top forty in the future or something like that. So, um, <laughs> I mean, a, a couple, a couple for me. Uh, geared forward at twenty seventh, uh, had a really great performance at Midwest. So, uh, you know, once again, they're twenty seventh. So hard for me to nitpick when you're only a couple spots out or something like that. Uh, Hilltoppers, uh, winners once, finalists twice. Uh, into there, um, so I'm picking a little bit more local teams. How about 4911 Cyber Knights, uh, who I think a lot of times play that third fiddle uh, in PNW. When you think of teams right now, you're thinking of uh, you know Jack in the Bot, Bear Metal, and now Cyber Knights has really been in that conversation a lot too. And of course, winning PNW uh, champs with uh, uh, Jack in the Bot as well too uh, as a team that I really like a lot. Uh, a couple others I've been hearing way more about the force team recently. I haven't had too much time to actually watch the robot play, but I've, I've heard a lot more chatter about uh, 1073 uh, recently. So definitely a team I'll, I'll be trying to take a little bit more of a look at uh, as well, too. Uh, 7407 is a good team overall. Uh, 4206, great shooter. Their teleop scoring is incredible uh, from Texas uh, that we saw. They were uh, the pick of 2468 Team Appreciate, who is another, another great team. Uh, as well, and by the way, two four six eight, my definite favorite to win championship chairmans this year's uh, as well too. Yes, so yes, yes, so yes, good yes. Luck. It has to happen this year. 
Yeah. I wanted to. Yeah. And there's always gonna be teams, you know, we don't mention, we don't cover, uh, you know, we, we are still four people, so we can only see so much, uh, in yeah. the FRC community. So let us know in chat, uh, which teams you feel uh, should be up there and who would you drop out? I think it's really a big thing, uh, as well too, but yeah, let us know who, uh, who you feel should be up there and, uh, congratulations to all these teams who are getting, uh, some well-deserved attention. I'm sure I know there's some that don't, that probably should. It's the nature of things. Uh, but, you know, first has grown to such a level that we just have so many teams now uh, that, you know, we try to recognize the ones we can and the ones that don't, be loud for them and uh, advocate for that team out there as well. Cool deal. So we'll uh, roll for that giveaway after we um, talk about the number one team. Hello, Pesto. By the way, Pesto joined us. I'll have Yay. to show you June later. She got a haircut and looks absolutely different. Um kind of sad about it but anyways <laughs> first pop dates now can be over for now um this top five group um is absolutely insane like doing kind of the research for these and watching these matches um man it makes me really excited for houston right and kind of the, the matches that we're going to get to see there and kind of really just going to see uh you know what what um district assignments come out or what um division assignments come out and kind of what we're going to kind of see, but man, it got me really excited for that. So uh, leading off in our fifth spot is going to be team at 3310 from Heath, Texas and Rockwell Heath high school. It's Blackhawk robotics, an overall record of 50 wins, five losses. They were the winners of the Waco and Irving district events. So heading into the fit district championship with two district wins in their belt, 3310 took to the mercury field as the clear favorites. Uh, what really separates 3310 is that um, they don't have a turret. They have that backsided intake and they shoot at the front. Uh, we talked so much about Swerve this year, which they have. Um, many also combine that with a turret. So um, just just shows you how good they are because they don't have kind of that advantage that auto tracks as they go around the field. Uh, but Swerve, their Swerve makes up for that. Um, when I say they can and will shoot anywhere, that's no cap, as the kids say. Um they launch pad against the hub anywhere um, they can just shoot. <clears throat> They'll finish the match with that quick traverse climb that they have as well. Uh, they would take the number one seed in the division with an 11 and one record and 3.66 ranking score average. As you've talked about, they've, they selected teams 30 Oh five and 30 35 and will blow through quarterfinals and semis with scores of 131, 116, 147 and 129 finals. As we've discussed uh, was just that wild ride. Uh, and would make that unfortunate ex exit in uh, with that DQ in finals match three um, and wouldn't get to face the Apollo division. But an incredible season for 3310. Really excited to see them play in Houston. Really hoping I can make it there to see this team uh, in action. Just, um, you know, you know when they're out there, just dominant in all phases. Um, I'll, I'll circle back kind of the 3310 here in a moment. Uh, as we have a couple other um, Texas teams to talk about. Um, and I kind of want to get just kind of Tyler's perspective, maybe all in one about that. Okay. Yeah, congratulations sure. to 30 through 10 on, on uh, their incredible season and uh, good luck uh, next week. Yeah. Mike, I like that, Mike. We'll, we'll kind of save uh, uh, once we get through uh, the Texas teams, I think we'll yeah. just kind of bundle them all uh, into one for these top ones. Yeah. I just, I love, love to hear you kind of talk about each one, but um, you yeah, know, just for sake of time, and okay. especially since we have no, a few to talk I about. I think we can still uh, give this diligence to each one and, but just, yeah, absolutely. Them, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, with that being said, our fourth-ranked team, another team from Texas, Team 148 from Greenville, Texas, and Greenville High School, it's the Robo Wranglers, an overall record of 52-6. and six. They were the winners of the uh, FIT District Championship event. So coming into the Apollo Division this past weekend, 148 was coming off two district wins at both of their events in Waco and Irving. They would finish second overall with a 3.33 ranking score average, and uh, they would take number one overall. Crazy matches in Apollo. And uh, 148 would take semifinals and finals to three matches each uh, and would go on to win the Apollo division and face Mercury in the grand finals. Uh, they would take both matches with scores of, would you know it, 148 and 112. <laughs> Um, 148 just flies around the field, scoring from any position. They have that fast traversal to cap off the end of the match. Uh, another dominant robot from the Robo Wranglers this season. They'll be, at, they'll be back in the George R. Brown Convention Center here just in a little over a week. Um so, yeah, just as we just saw on the screen there, they kind of had that, and we saw it in the clips of the week, they kind of um, tipped over that, the cable runner there and kind of used uh, their own climbing mechanism as well as 60, the help from 1600 to kind of right themselves. So that was kind of a great look from them uh, this season. And uh, to keep it in Texas, let's move right on to our third-ranked team, and that's going to be Team 6800 from Austin, Texas, and Vandergrift High School. It's Valor. 
an overall record of 54 and five. And they were the winners uh, as well of the fit district championship event. So like 148 uh, entering the district championship event this past weekend, Valor took wins uh, at both of their district events, those being dripping Springs and the hometown event in Austin. Valor has been a fan favorite this year. Uh, just because their intake to their shot is so quick. You really know, you, it's really hard to know when they're going to shoot uh, just because they're, they're auto tracking as they go. Uh, just their, the cargo path from their intake all the way up to their shooters is so quick. Um, Cause as soon as they get to, they're shooting them. They really don't need kind of any lineup time or anything from them. So uh, they have a pretty quick traverse climb at the end. Uh, their gameplay in the Apollo field was good enough by a lot for the first seed with a 12 and 0 record and a 3.91 ranking score average. Uh, and they would select 148 and 1745 to take the win in Apollo and then, and on uh, to win the grand finals as well. So uh, as we kind of talked about, I just had, and that's kind of why I did this. I had, the, I had three Texas teams in a row. Uh, and with you being there this past weekend, uh, if you could just kind of yeah. touch a little bit just on 33, 10, 148 and 6,800. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, I'll take these kind of one at one at a time on here. So, uh, thirty three ten overall. Uh, I I thought in quals were the best team uh, overall. They looked absolutely phenomenal, uh, and things were going <laughs> in the right direction for everything for thirty three ten. Uh, playoffs, however, though a little bit different story uh, for them. Quite unfortunately, uh, you know they had uh, some shooter issues in a match where they just couldn't shoot. They had to go play defense in a match. They, re- they got a couple of fouls from it. Uh, they, we know about the red card that I got called, uh, which wasn't them playing defense, by the way. Their shooter in final three of their division, uh, their shooter was back in form. It looked like, or at least like eighty five percent or something like that, to to a point where they could be extremely competitive. Uh, so then, so I think thirty three ten. It's a um, uh, very unfortunate set of circumstances circumstances uh for them uh on there uh, you know if they were performing at a high level uh we might have a different story talking about at least from a division standpoint uh on them and it, once again nothing against the division winners or anything like that just trying to look at this with with my lens uh on it so yeah i 33 10 cycle time was great uh their drivers are phenomenal on there the way that uh they're able to line up you know sans turret and that sort of thing like that um, really impressed by them. Hopefully they're fully fixed by the time championships comes. I know they will be right. So, uh, we, we know, we know that the team will be good to go on that. So yeah, 33, 10, very deserving, uh, a number five. I'm okay with them there. Once again, you know, if you look at the lens of playoffs, uh, of the three teams, they definitely were the lowest performing in playoffs out of those three, uh, just because of having some issues, uh, with their shooter as well. So, uh, 33, 10, uh, Really looking forward to championships like all these teams, but uh, I can't wait to see them back in like full form again uh, for it. So uh, 148, uh, let, let's unpack them a little bit. So 148 was kind of like the middle of the pack to me. They had, you know, uh, they weren't perfect by any means, but extremely consistent uh, as they went through for a lot of stuff. So I really, you know, appreciate them. We, You know, everybody's talking about the match, you know, where they they tipped over, riding themselves with their alliance partners. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the most memorable things that we'll see you know, not just in rapid react, but period. Right. But past that, I, you know, it's, it's easy to pay attention to that looking past that though. Uh, their cycle times were great. The way they were able to just line up and control the field like they did, uh, was really <clears throat> awesome to see, uh, on there. I really like that their ability just to kind of shoot. Um, we saw in this match here, 76, 16, uh, is playing defense against 140 in finals one and 140 is just running circles around their team. Uh, in this, like, it's almost like they're not even playing defense to be honest with you. There's a couple times they get bumped to the side. They might miss one or two cargo or something like that. But in general, I mean, they just were able to navigate the field with ease uh, on it. So uh, hats off to 148. Now, 6,800. Uh, this team, <laughs> absolutely incredible. I'm so excited uh, that they are, are in the number three spot on there. By the way, quick side note, prediction started on who's going to be number one. So if you want to wager your fun bucks, you can go ahead and do that before we get there. Uh, but Valor, you know, I've been very high on Valor for for at least this entire season, right? And uh, th- this team is just – it's it's consistent. It scores well. Uh, they had a uh, – in, in quals going through, they just never lit up. As I mentioned before, they had a match where they scored 60 cargo pieces in a match. Like it's insane uh, for something like that. So uh, very well deserved the number one ranking uh, shooter worked really, really well uh, on there. I have to admit, I was a little surprised by strategy uh, be- with them in 148. I actually thought 6,800 was going to be the robot that climbed and 148 was going to stay on the ground because 148 uh, <coughs> had a had a time or two where they slipped off while climbing in quals. Uh, so I was a little uh, surprised about that to see from a strategy uh, standpoint. But 6,800, you can just see on here, just able to keep uh, going around the field, quick cycles, quick scoring. 
looked great overall. And uh, all three of these teams uh, were, I mean, they're, they're that top tier echelon. And I think, uh, you know, we expect 33-10 and 148 to be up there. How about a team in the, in the late 6,000s now up in the top, yeah. top tiers? I think is so mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. All right, so Tower, thank you for that uh, Texas recap. Uh, I do want to just say <laughs> one thing. Uh, those three teams are, are phenomenal for sure. Uh, but I do want to give a, sh- a shout out to 1745. If you go back and watch some of the the defense they played, they were a defensive wizard on the field. Uh, they were really the they were really kind of will always be be uh, play a little bit of a, a second fiddle to 1600 148. But they were uh, a key to that alliance. Uh, I know that they were so excited and happy uh, to be with 148 and 1600, learning from some of the best teams in Texas, uh, and they played phenomenal. So I just want to give them a little special shout out. Nice. Uh, I'll agree yeah, real quick, sure. Justin, just to say um, I, they were playing like a zone defense a lot of their time, which I thought was kind of a cool strategy uh, that they had. They they were playing most of the time on the back side of the field. So you saw um, the other the robot on the other lines was playing either against 148 or 1600, depending depending which match it was. Uh, 1745 instead played a zone defense, uh, which was a, a neat strategy to play. Cool deal. Yeah, thanks for mentioning them. Uh, there, that's that's a great uh, that's a great point. So we did uh, have a little wager in the uh, in the chat about who is going to take that number one spot, and as we always say, all the dramas in the two spot. Uh, and in that place is Team uh, 1678 from Davis, California, and Davis Senior High School. It's the Citrus Circuits, an overall record of an incredible 48 and two. They were the winners this past weekend at the Silicon Valley Regional. Coming into the SVR uh, last weekend, 1678 was riding that win at the Hugh Namey. Um, regional, uh, which seems like so long ago, but also like not that long ago at the same time, uh, as well as that gold, gold clean bling in Sacramento and, and their win in, and um, uh, from their win in, in regional chairman's award uh, through only nine matches, they would win all of those with a 3.88 ranking score average at SVR. Uh, and that was only good enough for second to the team that we'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, we tend to focus on their auto cargo um, sorter that they have and, it's just so clutch in this game where seconds are really going to start to matter um, when they're, you know, an elite alliance is facing another elite alliance. Um, so just being able to like, I saw this in one of their matches, right? They're kind of, there's different uh, assortment of cargo right near their robot. Um, and just being able to just drive over it and knowing your robot is going to sort it for you um, is yeah. just so helpful. Um, with no turret, you wouldn't even know that because their lineup is just so quick. Uh, being able to score from the front or the back side of the hub, uh, you know, in their blind spots, just wherever. They finish off the the match. They have a pretty quick traverse climb, um, and it was just so so cool to kind of see this glimpse of Einstein. Now we saw this earlier uh, uh, between these two teams back in Sacramento, uh, but just to see just the the level of play just increase in that chemistry uh, and the choreography between these two teams was just so fun to watch this past weekend. Uh, so they have three wins, four banners on the uh, on the season for the circuits. Um, congratulations! Just another dominant year. They have an incredible uh, Einstein. Um, record going and just no doubt that they'll, you know, they're going to continue that this year and just, just an amazing, amazing robot, for, excuse me, from them. So their alliance partner in the number one spot for this week is 254 from San Jose, California and Bellarmine College Prep. It's the Cheesy Poofs, an overall record of 31 and one. They were the winners this past weekend, as we just mentioned, at Silicon Valley. So coming to the regional, they took a win at Sacramento and they would pick up where they left off. After nine matches, they would take the number one seed with a perfect 4.0 ranking score average. So pretty sure that's the first time we've seen this out of the number one seed. Um Granted, it was only nine matches where some have 11 or 12, but, you know, there's no doubt that, that they would have, you know, continued that anyway. So the Poofs would select 1678, and just like in Sacramento, they would dominate the playoffs with scores no less than 139 points. And I believe that um, they're topping, they topped that off with, we're saying kind of Tyler is the world record of 179, even though an Israel match was higher. Well, yeah, is that- I'm calling it the world record because the Israel match clearly had counter uh, uh, hub counter issues and the teams that are on the, from Israel acknowledge that as well too that they would not yeah. have the high score so yeah I call it 179 as a world record yeah just and absolutely just amazing to watch just all that cargo being scored so their dual sided intake is super fun to watch and the poofs just spend very little time not moving it's really hard to find them or count even you can't even get to a second of the time that they're not moving around the robot, you know, with their, with them lining up and all that. So uh, even a lot of their shots are, are moving just a touch. They kind of got that, that moving, um, moving in teleop, which we don't see a whole lot of. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of that in, in 
on auto, but not as much in telly. So just perfection all the way around for the cheesy poofs. Excited to see the division pairings because if, if for whatever reason, 1678 and 254 are in the same division again, um, just going to be insane to see how, uh, you know, if they team up again. Uh, or just how you know the chemistry, like I mentioned, has just has just grown even more. So, congratulations to the Poofs, um, number one seed here, going uh, into Houston next week, and uh, congratulations and good luck to them. But well, just like I said, an amazing time for them, by top... the way, too. Uh, here, at, what do you mean? Um, at yeah, number one? Yep, number one FRC top twenty-five in in this this year. Yeah, yeah, um, just incredible. These this whole group of five. Um, just amazing. These top two, watching those the, those two teams compete uh, once again, just just amazing. I don't know any other thoughts on sixteen seventy eight or two fifty four, but just wow for sure. Sorry, I, just, I need to take the comment that Griffin has in here. Is it just me, or is it boring when we see the same teams consistently at the top twenty five? I mean, there's a few, but at the top, I'm sorry. Are you going to say that a team that you suggested earlier is going to beat one of these top five teams in the top twenty five? I'm sorry, you're delusional if that's the case. There's no <laughs> way, man. Like I, I, I'm not nothing against those teams or anything like that, but you know, you're, you're not going to beat out 29, 10. You're not going to beat out 254 head on head with something like that. It's just not happening. Let me get a June in here for puppies. <laughs> now uh, we're going to roll for our, uh, we're going to roll for our giveaway. Yeah, we can do that definitely on there. So uh, once again, from our friends at rev robotics will be the uh, giveaway uh, for a $25 uh, rev gift card and the winner Oh, that is going to be Newcomb K. Congratulations, Newcomb K. You have won the $25 uh, Rev gift card on there. Please reach out. Uh, we just need your name and email uh, for that so Rev can send that out. And thanks again to Rev and all of our, all the suppliers who have been giving uh, giveaways throughout the season. We really do appreciate you uh, uh, for the giveaways for the live streams. Thanks a lot. And I think we got Pup Dates now starting, right? Oh, yeah. There's <laughs> June. She got right, a haircut. Got? She looks completely different. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> she got she got really matted, I guess, and they had to cut a whole bunch off. But. Yeah, I like her face. I like yeah, that she's like, hmm, like that. I'm here. <laughs> here you go. June. Here you go. Pasta's mad because Brandon's <laughs> not home yet from the lab. Wait, June. did it, who won? Who won? Uh, oh, I said uh, Pasta's mad because Brandon's not back from oh. <laughs> robotics yet. Sadness. Did we roll for the giveaway? Yeah, we did. The person actually already oh, DM'd me, so. Oh, nice. Oh, look at that. All right. Um, real quick announcement uh, before we go on Thanks. things. Uh, if you are at FRC <laughs> Championships, I keep forgetting to say this. If you're going to be at FRC Championships, uh, both Fun and the FRC Discord are holding a meetup together uh, that is going to be on Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, local time. So if you uh, want to meet up with all of us, uh, we will be somewhere in the convention center. Uh, we're going to scout out a location uh, prior uh, to championships. Um, so, we, so we'll let you know that location, what's a good area for it. Uh, but we will have some giveaways uh, for it. You get, you'll get to meet uh, myself and some of the other fun hosts. Uh, I know there's never going to be a great time, right? Like there's people who are drive coaches on teams or want to see their teams plays. There's never going to be a great time to, to get everybody together. But if you can make it, we'd love to have you there uh, at George R. Brown and to meet all of you. Uh, I know we have a sign up on our Discord and the FRC uh, discord as well too uh so sign up to be reminded of that and uh hope to see y'all there but yeah we got some giveaways uh some fun merch giveaways we have a couple suppliers that are doing uh giveaways and you get to meet a bunch of people from the frc and fun uh community so we'd love to see you there and love to have you be part of that on friday at 11 a.m next friday just put a poll up because it, that was a good that was a good suggestion by divisible by zero fluffy pup dates now nice we always said first pup dates now but i like fluffy oh pup dates i think paul's in the chat and he said spike and einstein say hi i say hi back <laughs> nice yes. uh we did one last thing we had somebody redeem an announcement so i want to get that but i'm missing where, where where that is on there uh where my channel points are there we go channel points queue for some reason it keeps deleting from the thing all right so we had an announcement uh redeemed for the live stream uh and uh pity 2716 says 333 got snubbed this week so shout out to 333 sorry you got snubbed uh and uh thanks to pity for uh giving the announcement you can redeem channel points for things like that uh so oh, mike we said hi there you go I missed mike i think he was drive coaching this week actually yeah i think he's drive coach yeah. for mike yeah. well no i'm saying but he wasn't because he just had a kid uh, but I think this, oh, I, I think this past event, I think he was actually drive. I thought I saw a picture of him drive coaching. Hmm. So, 
All right, everybody, uh, let's wrap up. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the FRC Top 25 for week number six. And thanks to all those who clicked the follow button or stepped up with the subscription. We really do appreciate it. Helps us stay loud, live, and independent. Uh, it, it really does. You know, I know we have a couple sponsors, but we really do need your support as well, too. It means the world to us that you're willing to just throw us a couple bucks uh, to let us know that you appreciate what we do. It really does mean a lot to us. And, and make sure you click that follow button. If you can't help support financially, we understand. Uh, but let others know about what's going on. Uh, and let others know uh, in regards to what fun is so they can tune in and check it out either, uh, of course, here live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash first updates now or at youtube.com for slash first updates now as well. Uh, don't forget, uh, FRC Top 25 uh, will be back next week. Uh, times are going to shift a little bit. We'll let you know on things because uh, we're trying to figure out when divisions are going to release for, for FRC Worlds. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It might be a little bit different time. Uh, we'll let you know on that. Don't forget the vote, by the way. Polls open uh, on Sunday. The next poll will be for all of FRC, and it will be for teams that are attending championships. So you can vote for teams that are attending championships. We don't do a week seven poll. There's only four events that are going on uh, during that. So it's just going to be going into uh, championships on that uh, for you to vote. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. We'll open on Sunday afternoon. Uh, I'll be driving back from MSC on Sunday, so I will open it whenever I take a rest stop for that. Um, they'll close Monday at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern as well. Uh, and don't forget the other shows we got going on. FRC recap uh, will be a little bit different with only four events uh, on Monday. So we'll once again announce what's going on for that and a bunch of behind the bumpers, uh, that sort of thing going on too. So Mike, what was the poll result that came up, by the way? Uh, we're holding strong at first updates now at 11 votes, fluffy updates now at one. But, you know, for the, uh, for the cat, maybe the cat segment we could do first updates meow. So. <laughs> All right. Um, sounds so, sounds good. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, I will be at Michigan uh, uh, Champs MSC this weekend. Uh, I'm getting there Thursday evening, so I'll be there Friday and Saturday all day. Uh, anybody else going to be at events or watching or anything like that? I'll no, be at New England District Champs this weekend, not Yay. with my team. Um, it is. To Texas. <laughs> sorry, to Texas. sorry, Christine, go ahead. Yeah. I say I'll be at uh, New England District Champs this weekend in. Springfield, Massachusetts, and it should be good. Not with my team, though, just to do stuff. Wait, did – why not your team? Do they not qualify? What am I missing? Because um, – so there, there's a whole system set up with New England where if you are in the top 16, you can bypass district championships in order to send your stuff and um, oh, okay. not – have to pay and compete at district championships, which for us is a team that does not have parent support or other adults besides, you know, maybe this many. Um, it's it's a huge advantage to have, but it also allows mm -hmm. us to kind of watch and cheer on some friends. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you uh, next week. Keep an eye out for what that timing is going to be. Uh, other than that, have a great night. We'll see you next time. Talk to you then. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in robotics scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first chose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.